Welcome to Tools in the Shed, a podcast powered by Cars Guide. And we're ready to rip into car stuff that's caught our eye this week. I'm James, and with me is Steve Corby, one of the world's most talented automotive journalists, asking some fundamental questions about those four letters that mean so much, especially to taxi drivers, Uber. As well as Richard, who's been confusing cars with prehistoric creatures. And we'll update you on the adventures of our favourite giga hero in this week's Muskwatch. So stay with us. But first, we go to Diffuser, where we look at some of the feedback we've had during the week. And thankfully, we have some, which means people have been listening <laughs> right. to the yeah. podcast, which is brilliant. So thanks to um, you know, a long-time mate of the show, uh, knows a bit about Land Rovers and Jaguars, James Scrimshaw. Thank you very much. He gave us a, uh, a great episode, gents. And Connor Miller chipped in with a thumbs up emoji which we're very grateful for thank you and uh, after last week's bev phev discussion sd wonders which panel members have actually driven a tesla now (laughs) i'm I'm not sure whether that relates to the discussion we had about bevs and febs and all that stuff or Muskwatch. but i've got to say i've driven a tesla yeah and richard you've driven a tesla 100 percent yes now I'd say yeah. that Mr. Pritchard mm-hmm. from last week, in fact, I checked with him, he has categorically not driven a Tesla. Mm. Um, but Peter Anderson, who was uh, in on the act last week, most certainly has. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, I, I hope that answers the question. If you want to go the next step and follow up with another question, SD, by all means. So um, there you go. And with that, we will move to blowing a gasket, where we get stuff off our chest. Steve, Uber, is it making traffic worse in big cities? Why is it that Uber drivers are generally better than taxi drivers in terms of their basic skills? That's something you'd like to touch on today. It is. I think it's amazing that uh, taxi drivers have always been so terrible. I always think of them trying to kill a scorpion. Like there is a brake pedal scorpion in every taxi and they all just want to stamp it, tramp it, kill it with their foot. But Uber drivers seem to be able to drive without that. And generally, generally, I'd say 99% of them are quite good drivers. But anyone who gets excited about Uber, I say you realise that all it means is more cars on the road. Mm -hmm. They're either delivering your food, they're picking you up and say, oh, I don't have to drive as much. But you are creating an enormous amount of traffic. And now the stickers are on. You really notice it once they've got the Uber stickers in the back. Everywhere you look, it seems to be an Uber. In traffic, if you're in traffic, look around. It's an Uber driver. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. The other thing I hate is the time vortex. You know, if the average man lasts five minutes, I'd last. I'd, I'd like it to last for the five minutes that it takes for an Uber to get to my house. Because yeah. it always says it'll be there in five minutes. Yeah. You, you start counting, it is never five minutes. Yeah. So. They're, so they're Uber minutes. Uber minutes, mm. special minutes. Yes. I like Uber minutes because they're longer than other minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if we all lived according to Uber, Uber yeah. minutes. I want to live for 100 span. Uber years. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> be perfect. Well, I think to your point about driving style, a lot of taxi drivers mm. over time to me seem to have a really abrupt way yeah. of making any input to the car. Yeah. Mm. So the brake pedal is a lot of that and the throttle is a lot of that and yep. then the steering's that. So yep. you find yourself in this kind of washing machine yeah. mode where it's yeah. decidedly um, uncomfortable. Yeah. And besides that, the car is generally a wreck. It's disgusting. So I've, yeah. I've often yeah. thought, you know, with a, a lack of skill behind the wheel and a frankly borderline dangerous car, I'm better off driving drunk, you know. I'm yeah. I'm I'm probably better off getting in the car <laughs> under the influence than getting that taxi. Yeah. And the yeah. Uber thing, because it's typically that person's car, it's their personal transport. Mm. Mm. It's probably going to be in better condition. It, and they have it's more rules. likely to have been serviced. Their exactly. cars can't be two hundred years old. They have to yeah. have less than sure. a million kilometres. You know, just small rules like that make yeah. a difference. And even the star rating system, I think that helps as well. Is mm. that you know they're concerned that if you get out of the car and you don't, they don't give you a good service, then you're going to give them one star. Yeah. Mm. Um, whereas with a uh, taxi, a regular taxi driver. Do they care if you're happy or not? What's my greatest joy is that what I loved about Uber when it started the most is you could rate people's driving. The amount of times I've wanted to turn to a taxi driver and say, you should give this up and go and, you know, (laughs) sell sandwich board or something. But but you can actually say, get this person off the road, they're a terrible driver. That's probably for me the one, that's the single best thing about Uber. It's the taxi driver hand that comes down and rests at the bottom of the steering wheel and drives from there. Uh, No, he's just switching between Alan Jones and... (laughs) That's that's what the hand's for. Alan Jones and someone else angry. The uninvited (laughs) opinions. Yeah, oh, I love that. Oh, well. yeah. Yeah, that tends not to happen in, in Uber. Not as much, but you do get some crazy get ones. Get a bit of that. You get a, a crazy yeah. one now and then. But then you look up on the app and they've always been rated for good conversation. Yeah. So if you're a bit mad, I think you get five stars for conversation. <laughs> well, I, I did, did have a bad Uber experience the other morning on the way to the airport. Uh, just 6 a.m. flight, you know, regular launch type of time. And uh, I've suggested to the driver, look, if I could just tell you a quick way to go. And he goes, Richard, I know where I'm going. And I've gone, oh, well, this is just around the back of... Yeah, the international airport. He goes, 
Richard, I lived here now for 15 years. <laughs> and I've gone... At the airport? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, cool. You know, the, the, that way. How did you I go? Did, did it end up being slower than you would have guessed? It was faster. It was quite Oh, was it? Yeah, there it was, <laughs> that there just ruined your story. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to rate drivers five stars uh, because I'm mm. just worried about blowback. And they might not rate <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Have you ever looked up your own rating? It's terrifying. My, I was rating mm. forever five-star passenger. I thought, this is fantastic. And then I was 4.89 something. I thought, who was it? What who did you do? I don't, and I don't know what I I can did. never imagine what yeah. I've done to get you know yeah. anything below be five. I down. am a five as far as I'm concerned. Is I there am a fantastic <laughs> company. <laughs> is there a danger that the rating system could go beyond Uber in the same way that it has in China, where they've got a social credit system, oh. where if you don't pay your bills, it goes towards your five-star uh, rating yeah, system or right, two-star right, or whatever right, you are. Right. Mm. And then that can that can uh, stop you from getting hotels or you know flights or resorts or stuff like that. And if that. you get down to zero stars, you just switched off. Well, that's you know, it. Yeah. And they developed cameras which can actually uh, facial recognition people and go James five star, Steve Corby four, oh. Georgia two. Um, and then that will prevent you from Are renting a car. Are you a two-star person, Georgia? <laughs> that's extraordinary. That's Georgia's our producer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, well, that's interesting. I, I mean, we'd love to hear um, anyone who's listening, hear your thoughts on the matter. Are you an Uber user? Are you thinking about it? Have you been a long-time Uber user? Let or us an know Uber driver. Or a driver. Or at least people have become driver. drivers. Exactly. Yeah. Give us some Uber dirt. That's a, Uber dirt. Yeah. The inside Why, why do you Uber rate scoop? down the passengers? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you rate me down? Could you yes. tell me? I'd what, like to know why I can rate Wouldn't it, down. it be great to hear from an Uber driver as to why they typically rate a passenger down? That yeah. would be very yeah, yeah. good. I'd like to know. But it shows you get a reasonable standard of driving ability with no training, whereas taxi drivers are yeah. supposedly trained. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I was with a, uh, a driver driving somewhere in Germany recently, and he, he was asking how the license system works. And I told him that um, rather than being taught by professionals, we're taught by our parents. And he almost crashed the car. <laughs> sure. He pulled over and wept slightly. <laughs> you can't let your parents teach you to drive. Yeah, what do no. they know about driving? Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, nothing. Precisely. Yeah, that's, right. yeah. that's a whole <laughs> other blowing gasket uh, oh, discussion. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't stop me. Uh, that's for sure. Uber drivers in Germany are awesome. But what about <laughs> other, like Lyft? Have you been in another country and tried Lyft or some o- other Ola alternative or scheme? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything? No, I haven't. I tried to try, I tried to use Taxify for a while because I knew they were paying the drivers more and the app just died after a while and stopped, okay. just stopped working. But and I have where, used Where Lyft. was that? Where was that was in Australia. It was launched in Australia for a little while. Taxify was... Okay. And it was just... Main, most drivers had Taxify and Uber. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was just paying the drivers slightly anymore, so I was trying to use that one to them. Okay. It just seemed like a nice thing to do. And they've used Lyft in America. It's pretty much the same. Same they've got a They've got a nice pink glowing sign, so if you're feeling a bit, you know, it's late at night, you want a bit of fun, you'd probably go with Lyft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's interesting. As I say, we'd love to hear anyone who's listening or watching uh, your thoughts, but at this point, we're going to move on, and Richard, yes. you've been conf- conflating um, you know, yeah. prehistoric creatures with cars. You've gone into some altered state where it's all a bit I much. Have. Tell us what's going look, on. Look, uh, I've become a bit of a Kia Cerato expert. Uh, look, the sedan arrived last year. The the hatch version of the Cerato, the new generation Cerato, has arrived this year. Uh, incredibly good value uh, for what G- you get. Give us a thumbnail on what the Cerato represents. Uh, Cerato. Okay, so if you're interested in a Mazda 3, uh, Toyota Corolla, Hyundai i30, then you really need to look at a Cerato. Okay. Uh, because what Kia are able to do is they're able to make the same car but sell it for a whole lot less. Uh, and in a lot of ways, they've packaged it so that you that does does make things like the Corolla seem too small. So the Cerato is a knockoff. It's actually a Mazda 3. It's actually... The, it, it, <laughs> they've it, made the same thing they've made for a the lot less thing, money. But in a lot of ways, the, the knockoff, well, <laughs> knockoff has become the benchmark. Okay. Um, and... Uh, Look, I've 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 reviewed the car. I went to the Serato GT launch, and I've written about every single grade in the lineup. Um, check out the review on CarsGuide.com.au. Um, but basically, uh, I look at my pricing. For twenty four thousand and ten dollars, you can get into a base spec Serato, and that's before on road costs, or that's a well, drive away type price. You know how Kia do drive away deals, mm-hmm. and they do them like everyone does them at a launch. But Kia's drive away deal lasts forever. Hangs around for a while. <laughs> yeah. Like okay. It, the, Doing twenty three four ninety as a driveway, and that'll be around. So even if you're looking at this podcast in the year two thousand and sixty, it probably <laughs> still exists. That <laughs> same we, driveway. The deal. driveway deal still in place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what are we looking at engine wise? It's a two liter four cylinder. Two something? liter four cylinder. Yeah. The GT gets a one point six uh, four cylinder with the turbo. Um, with the turbo. Turbo right. one point six, um, yeah. making it's the same engine that's in the Hyundai SR or at the Hyundai N line, uh, which is a pretty good unit, one hundred and forty seven kilowatts. Uh, pretty powerful in the GT. The two litre isn't as powerful, yep. but you know, it's not a sports car. People aren't buying these. It's not, you know, 
it's an A110 or anything like that. Sure, sure. Um, but it comes with, uh, even the base spec car comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It comes with, you know, everything you're after. Sure. Um, things that, you know, in probably a German prestige car, you're going to have to pay money for. It's um, part of it, isn't it? That mm. kind of responsiveness from yeah. um, the major South Korean brands is a key part of their success, that mm. um, they don't hesitate in acquiring whatever it needs, whatever they need to acquire rapidly. Absolutely. Be that people that know how to do things, technology that upspecs their cars, mm. whereas, yeah, you get the feeling that somehow there's mm. a we've got to do it ourselves kind of uh, thought process with some of the European makers. Absolutely. You know? Like, you know... We, all of us, drive hundreds of, test drive hundreds of cars a year. And when you get into something like this and you sit there and you think, oh, my God, like this is, it's it's cheap. Um, and, yes, yeah, some of the materials don't feel as nice as in a Beamer or a Benz or something like that. But in terms of your value for money for about $24,000, you could easily spend $24,000 in, in options right. on a Benz oh, or a Beamer yep. for the price of, for us of like car. Yeah. You could what about styling wise? I mean, Kia's yeah. used to be a bit... Yeah, well, but now it's good it's, to look at. Well, now that you know, well, yeah, I hate mentioning his name time and again, but mm. Peter Schreier has been magic for Kia. Um, mm. He was poached from Audi, uh, and ever since he joined Kia, uh, they've started looking amazing. He man- um, managed to make the carnival look good. Yeah, you know, that's a, <laughs> the that's a major amazing. achievement. Yeah, yes. um, the jury's kind of out whether the Serato, the new Serato, is good looking or not. Uh, from the back, it looks amazing. It looks like a, it looks like a bit. There's a bit. Of, BMW X4 about its tail lights. From the side, it looks. I, I think it hurts my eyes. It looks like a, <laughs> a a Lancer hatchback. It's it's got this weird sort of elongated shape about it. All right. Um, the sedan looks good though. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Because it's such a hot part of the market. Mm. Uh, I mean, overall, cars are diminishing. SUVs are eating everything in its in their path. Mm. But with a new Corolla from from just last year and a Mazda 3 about to arrive. The Serato, if that's its competitive set, it's got to really step up, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. The GT has been given uh, sport suspension. Right. Uh, and it is extremely firm, like to the point where it's like, oh, this is, you know, of, of the, you know, the four of us in this room, there's not probably going to be two of us who are like, oh, I could probably deal with it. And one of us who goes, yeah, on a daily basis. It's just, right. yeah, it's too firm. Uh, and yet this has been, I mean, Kia is a special for tuning mm. things for local yep. conditions. Yes. Yeah? So yep. they've had a go at that car as well. And yeah. yet it's... It's come out overly firm, you think? Overly firm, but there are going to be people, as I said, who are going to love it. The great thing is, is that it looks identical to the grade below it. So the Sport Plus and the Sport. In fact, they all look the same, apart from the base grade car, which has yes. got hubcaps. Um, so if you don't want that crazy hard ride, um, you can buy any other spec and they look the same. Now, um, give, give yeah. us the prehistoric connection. What have you discovered oh, yeah. there? The, the Serato <laughs> so, goes back quite a way, doesn't it? Well, you type Serato into Google, and one of the first things that comes up is Ceratosaurus. Yes. And that was it's a the dinosaur. same spelling. Yeah. Ceratosaurus. 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 I love it. Which is apparently, just, just between you mm. know, us and, and you guys, what Kia referred to the last generation of Serato as well, the Ceratosaurus. Ceratosaurus. Um, <laughs> they didn't. Um, the Ceratosaurus uh, was different from the other dinosaurs in that it ate... Um, it, ate one particular dinosaur. It loved. It, it, just li- ju- it completely lived off another dinosaur <laughs> and probably oh. not the most digestible one. Oh, wow. The, Cerato, the Ceratosaurus ate, prim- lived off Stegosaurus. Really? Oh. Like, abs- ab- this is the God's honest truth. The Ceratosaurus was like a cross between a Velociraptor uh-huh. and a T-Rex. So it was like a crazy, scary well, my, my, right. main, good my main point of reference for dinosaurs is the Flintstones. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well. a Stegosaurus, I always thought, was pretty big. Yeah. That's the one Fred was on the back of, right? Yeah. Doing the rocks yeah. in the quarry. Yeah. So, this thing would have to be pretty large. Yeah. Well, well, in modern it's in terms, between. it's big enough to eat a lawyer off the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> just just about just. That, almost that size yeah and it had these two big horns on its nose and lived, lived off stegosaurus amazing fantastic so stegosaurus would... did come with plates would be handy right? so you <laughs> yeah. could take the plate off and serve the rest yeah, of the yeah, animal yeah. on the plate on so the it was plate. quite a civilised yeah. dinosaur you could plate yeah. up you could plate your dinosaur mm. well that's Delicious. good so that was obviously the inspiration for the car so it's that's where... tough single minded focused yeah. on its job but they never mentioned that they, they never, never mentioned it never mentioned they it. never bring it up yeah, they they're very were, humble. They don't, they don't, they don't, be, so what's the name of this come from? Well, we don't like to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, it's a kind of a humble brag, you know. <laughs> it gets out. The truth will always it out. Eventually will get out. Thanks yeah. to Google, the truth will get out. All right, now, first. what we are going to do now is move beyond Ceratosaurus and talk about what is in our garage, what we've been driving during the course of this week. 
And because you're an occasional visitor, Steve, we're going to make an exception and go for two of the cars that you've been driving. They're both significant uh, in slightly different ways. Talk us through the pair of them. Well, I've just come back from the launch of the new Porsche 911, which I wish was in my garage. And uh, it's always for me, it's a car I'm very emotionally involved with. So the first time I drive it, I'm like, please, let it be good. And the last generation was a great car, but it didn't have that kind of magic. And this one, I was driving it down a hill through a set of S bends, and all of a sudden, there's this moment of like, you know, weeping. This is just so great. I didn't actually weep because that'd be dangerous, but I was so uh, filled with joy that it was better, better than ever. The steering is right. It's 11% more direct. They've just got everything about it right. And Arclight, another Mr. 911, was saying, he said, the steering has to be like that because we fixed the whole car to be firmer. So the brake pedal has to feel firmer. The steering has to be more direct. And just the, he's explaining this approach of everything about the car has to feel a certain way. You're like, no wonder this thing's so good. Yeah. Like, they put so much time and effort into it, and it was just. Wonderful. If I was uh, $285,000 richer, I'd be so much but, happier right now. And, and the, the underpinning of all of that feel is enjoyment. Yeah, so it's, joy, it's, yeah. it, it's not to feel luxurious or comfortable. It's to feel fun. Yes. You know, and, and enjoyable to drive. Yes, and he's saying we could have made it five seconds faster around the Nürburgring, but we want it to be good in all conditions for all drivers. They understand, you know. Mm. And if you want the hard and fast version, there's 600,000 variants still to come. But the first one, just the, the Carrera S, um, is amazing. Unfortunately, they didn't have the manual yet, but thankfully they are still making one. The manual will come later wow. this year. And I said, why? You always did the manual first because that's what enthusiasts buy. He said, yes, but that's when uh, that's when our manual sales were higher than 9%. So now wow. more than 90% of Porsches will not be manual, but they're still going to make them for the 9% well, of people who good, want yeah. one. And that's typically Porsche. Typically Porsche yeah. as well. I think Arclight and have fought for that very hard. So, yes. It's interesting. What, do, what do you make of um, some feedback that I've been reading that it's over-engineered and the 911 has progressively got larger, heavier, all of those things, that you get the feeling if you gave the 911 brief to Lotus – you'd end up with an entirely different 911 that oh. might be lighter and even more agile. But where do you sit on that kind of spectrum? It, it is a big car now. It is a big car, and they did roll out or every 911 ever at the launch. They'd rolled them out right. one past another. You see the size, If if, it, if he said it's because humans have grown, but if you look at the first one and the one now, you'd assume that all humans were 12 feet tall and 350 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> My God, we must exactly. be huge. Exactly. So uh, yeah, it's a lot bigger, but they're magic, they're, the when magic of the grown, car. does he mean fatter? Yeah, fatter. Yeah. We've all grown enormously fatter, which right. might need to be more powerful just to move our hatter, huge asses. <laughs> but no, I think the thing he was most proud of with the car is these new dampers. He said they're more expensive, whatever he said, but now we don't have to wait for the damper to reach the top or bottom point of its travel to be adjusted. We're adjusting it hundreds of times a second so we can give you the perfect ride. He said all of the harshness is gone. He claims that all of the harshness from the ride wow. is gone. Wow. So it has this beautiful balance between being hard when you want it to be in Sport Plus and uh, just cruising when you don't want it to be. And it doesn't feel large. The, you know, the other thing that's divisive is the style, but when you actually see it in the flesh, it does It does look fantastic. It looks right. meaner than your bonnet crease and everything. So it's bigger, yes, but uh, bigger but actually better, I think. All it's, right. not, it's not quite Panamera. So speaking of Mina, the flip side of your driving week has been uh, <laughs> kind of an American take on a similar proposition. Well, that's right. Yes, the HSV Camaro, which I only went and drove because I was reading your story about it. And I was mm. like, well, okay, I will drive it. I've always had a kind of difficult relationship with uh, HSV. I was a, I used to work at a magazine called uh, Wheels where it was un, unspoken. You're, you had to love HSV, I think, and I, uh, I never did. So uh, right. uh, I've kind of had a secret shame there I'm letting out now. <laughs> but um, I thought I've always loved the look of the Camaro. And so you get into the Camaro and like everything about it's fantastic, fact, except for the fact that you can't see. It's a bit like being in bird box driving yeah. the bloody thing because the, the windows are the size of ice trays. But um, I was thinking, this, is, this car's a bit stupid. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Some of the things about how the, um, the right to left, left to right conversion, the windows, the, the, sorry, the wing mirrors don't quite sit right, all these weird things. I'm like, oh, I don't know, it's a bit strange. And then you start it up and drive, and I was like, oh, I just couldn't stop laughing. It's like being a, uh, <laughs> like the inside, the, the bogan 16 year old version of myself was just cackling like a loon. It's like, this is so great. I want to go to Bathurst and rip my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. So I, it, it sort of it overtook me with joy, and then while I was driving, actually, the wheels editor rang me, and I was, I was just cackling. He said, "What's wrong with you? I meant a Camaro." He said, oh, "I understand." Right, <laughs> interesting, very. So interesting. it was very cool, except it was white, and I really wanted it to be yellow. A uh, small complaint. So it's it's mm. substantially dearer than a Ford Mustang, which is oh. its its natural competitor. So if you were actually in real life faced with that choice, where would you stand? I would I would not be looking at either of those cars in real life, but in real life, I can understand why. It's for people who have, you know, more money than cents, and you just want one. You want one so much you'll pay anything for it, I think, and that's the, but that's a no they'll get away with that because the price is almost irrelevant. You're not buying this car for any sensible reason. Mm. If you were sensible, you'd buy a German car. Mm. You know, you'd buy something else mm. that's True. going to be better to drive. You'd buy a WRX, yeah. you know, yeah. something a bit more practical. Yeah. But you're buying, it because it's, you're buying it because of the love you get through your eyes, I think. You know, yes. it, it, it looks so fantastic. So, And for a little while, at least, it will look unique on our roads. It'll still Definitely. stand out. Yeah, and, well. uh, and there's just people, I think, who've always wanted one. You go to America and see that car and go, why can't we have that? 
that. Yeah. And anyway, yeah. why can't we have one for thirty five thousand dollars, frankly? But yes. um, and sadly, think, HSV has dropped the I, I just want one positioning line. It yeah. seems to sit very Which would well have with sat that perfectly. car. What I loved also that it has a Chevy badge and a HSV badge, so it's gonna make some bogans oh. so happy. <laughs> I saw a Monaro <laughs> yesterday with a Chevy badge and it made me so angry because <laughs> that car is one of the Australian manufacturing or car manufacturing's finest moments. <laughs> I've never understood why do they want a Chevy badge. Like, it's, a, it's the engine. I mean, it's an LS engine, which is a Chevy, a General Motors engine. Uh, I, look, it's cultural cringe at its Where's finest. your national pride? Don't you do want to yeah. drive an Australian car? You do know car? that some Americans on their SS in the States put a Holden badge on. Really? Yeah. They really, really, really do? Yeah. I've always hoped that they yeah. did. I don't understand. Okay, I'm yeah. even more no, baffled by it's that. It's a bit of I know something you might not know. Maybe. You'd have to thing. ask them. But it happens. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit like wearing a McDonald's hat or something. I just want to wear the logo <laughs> of a giant American corporate because I don't like Australian things. Would you like a pie? No, McDonald's for me. Yeah. 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 Well, Bizarre. Richard, you managed to stagger away from a, a lengthy line of Serratos yeah. into something <laughs> altogether different. What, what's <laughs> been your transport this week? Okay, so you can get yourself into a Serato for about 25 grand or 24 grand. Uh, I've been driving Apollo GTI, uh, which is the little baby brother of the, the Golf uh, GTI, I suppose. Uh, it's tiny. Uh, even though it's bigger than the last one, it costs thirty thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars. Now that's look, I wouldn't get one. I loved it, 30, but I wouldn't get one because for thirty thousand one hundred ninety dollars, for eight hundred dollars less, you could get yourself into a Volkswagen Golf Comfort Line. So, which is not even the base spec, you know, Volkswagen Golf, uh, and you've got space in the back. You've got you know basically room to move full that, size car you got a yeah. full size car mm. that was i suppose one of the main issues i had with the the, the golf gti the performance polo gti the performance was fantastic it's very firm as well it's hard to live with sort of driving down crystal street in sydney mm. where you know it's the worst road in the world uh mm. what's where's crystal street crystal street it's the actual name of the street sounds like something out of the wizard <laughs> of Oz. yeah it's at the end of dark the crystal road dark it's crystal street's a lot scarier go to the yeah. end of the yellow brick road then it's when you're at the emerald city crystal take street. crystal street it's kind of the opposite to what it sounds like doesn't it go past the oxford tavern it goes past the oxford yeah, tavern there you go. uh very, that's all you need to know that's all you need to know <laughs> heads into stanmore and heads down to leichhardt it's uh it's it's one of my road and ride and test ride and handling parts of my road testing and the 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 Apollo GTI just, um, my wife wanted to get out. Crashed and, and banged down the end all of the All harshness has not been removed. Right. No, no, it's yeah. very, very yeah. firm as well. And that short wheelbase doesn't help that either. And uh-huh. the torsion beam across the back is very thick and stiff. It's, um, yes. Look, and carrying a four-year-old in the back as well. Uh, is it your four-year-old? My <laughs> one you, that's when you kind of it's my, my own, acquired. my very own four-year-old. Okay. It really, there's really not much room for... Uh, my wife to sit in her seat uh, and for him to put his legs in his car seat behind her. Really? It's that yeah. tiny. Okay. Like there was a moment where his legs appeared over her shoulders. <laughs> and <What>? it was. <laughs> yeah, that's how much. How long are his legs? They're Please very don't. long. Well, he's my son. Don't take <laughs> advice from Richard on how to install a child seat. <laughs> Doesn't it go on the back of a four year old and destined for the NBA? <laughs> he's, yeah. very, he's very long limbed. Um, can you still cock a wheel though? That's what I loved about the Polo GTI. You if, you're still, out on the, if you're out on a good bit of road and you go around the corner fast enough, it will actually cock a wheel. I cocked a wheel right. accidentally on the way to work the other day. So do you plant someone um, at the corner just to see? <laughs> oh, if well, I'm only because there's a photo. I, I oh, plant okay. a photographer there generally. Right, right. You, so I could put it on my wall when I get home. You, you, <laughs> you absolutely can. Uh, it's 147 kilowatts, 320 newton meters, and the 320 comes in like just above idle. So it's so much fun mm. if you've got. No one that needs to sit in the back, and probably no one that needs to sit beside you. And it's a car just for you. It's 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 a lot of fun. It's a car but for a young single man who can't afford one. That's right, exactly right. <laughs> um, but if you've got more than one person that you need to take to you know work or a child you need to take to daycare, go the golf wow. for less money. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to cough up with a a car that I've only driven overnight, and I love it. Um, it's the <laughs> it's quick. It's um it's yeah it's a one nighter a yeah, one night stand and it's um. The Alpine A110, and I've got to say that all it took was a few turns of the wheels out of the car park mm. uh, to realise that it was something pretty special. And I'm, for what it's worth, one of the people that's always liked the Alpha 4C. It mm. has its detractors. It's too crashy in the suspension. The steering needs some power assistance. I loved that connectivity and was willing to put up with it. This car gives you just that same amount of involvement with a heck of a lot more comfort. Mm. It's it's a much more refined proposition. It's still got the mid-engine location. It's highly impractical, but it's delightful to drive. It is so much fun to drive. And the steering is 
the steering Lotus is great. Like, yeah. It's fabulous. And it only took the first turn of the wheel. Mm. It's a quick rack. It's got all of these things going for it. I've got a bit more investigation on the mm. car to happily uh, to go through during the coming week. But I just first impression is amazing. I've sat in it. I haven't driven it. Right. Um, when the boys picked it up yesterday, I leapt out of my MUX and straight into that. Yeah. And I'm like, it's a bit of a change. Uh, sure. Going from an MUX it's a small car, it. yeah. How did you go fitting in those seats? No problem. Really? Yeah. And Show me your bum. Aside from... <laughs> Like, oh, that's going to just keep that on the career. Uh, Show me your bum. Aside, yeah. how, aside like, how from you, that, I could not get in. Look, I'm I'm a surprisingly are, slim-hipped person. You are snake-hipped, okay? don't you? So you he's a in, Aside from the <laughs> aside from the seat itself, the attention to detail is really lovely. So yeah. owning it as a jo- an object, mm. little flashes the French flag. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, interior trim is quilted. Yeah. Um, mm. The seats are beautifully finished with brushed aluminium highlights. Yeah. It just looks great, and the rims. So much about it to love. Um, I really, really enjoy and it. And would you pay what it costs then? Oh, look, I, I, we'll get to that when I write mm. the full review. Yeah. I've got yep. a little more investigation to go through, but all I'm saying is first impression is horrendously positive. Um, it, there's only one way for it to go from I, here. But. We, we've been watching this car like arrive forever, mm. um, and I like that it's arrived and it looks so much like the original. Mm. I love. Oh, it's almost it's, a you know a retro, yeah, uh, retro yeah. car. I'll, I think it's fantastic. It's more than inspiration. The front of it looks very much like the older older car. The back, it's almost like they ran out of steam. You know, it's a bit mm. kind of oh, let's just finish it off. Um, but yeah, that's subjective anyway. Mm. I, I think the as is the driving experience, I suppose. But um, we'll see. I've got a really good week ahead. Um, I've never, driving yeah. car. I have never heard you like this. It's like you've, it's like you've got like I don't know. Like it's like you've come back from a date. You've, you've or met a dance the one. Festival. Well, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> like, there it is, Richard. I think it's her. I think she's the one. Yeah. <laughs> well, when's the last time you enjoyed something this much? What would that have been? Oh, that's uh, a bit personal, isn't it? No, yeah, the car. A car you've enjoyed this much. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this sense, mm. I reckon it probably was like a four C, which is years ago. Like, wow, this is really uh, has just chucked all that um, assistance and all mm. of that uh, digital stuff. It's felt very analog. Um, this car is not the same in that way. It does feel a little more modern and a little more um, forgiving, mm. uh, but just as involving. Mm. So t- time will tell. But um, I yeah, think the four C is great, but you couldn't. I couldn't live with it. Whereas uh, the, what you want about it, this car is that people say it's good enough. You get all to, that joy, but you can actually yes. live with it. Whereas exactly. the four C is fantastic around a track and great for a day, but at the end of the day, quite happy to hand it back. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that's a fair enough assumption and uh, assessment rather. And same with a Lotus, you know, if you're in a Lisa or an Exige or whatever, that's great fun, but mm. it's going to, you know, probably physically hurt you yeah. after yeah. after a period of time. This car, no way. Um, it's mm. It's got that level of refinement that lets you uh, c- carry on. And it, it didn't were. catch fire like it did for Chris Harris and no. Uh, no. No, Eddie. No, it didn't. So far, no, no fire. Yeah. No flames. Yeah. No? Uh, lovely. So, good. anyway, good. speaking of passion, it's time for Musk Watch. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so the good news this week for uh, our hero is that Tesla has recorded back-to-back profitable quarters. So it's the first time they've ever done that. So, that so the, last, the first time. <laughs> the last half of 2018 was all profit um, wow. for Tesla. $139 million profit on the back of a record-breaking revenue of $7.2 billion for the October-December period. So happy days. That's all good. The not so good news is that that quarterly profit was less than expected, and the company lost a billion dollars for the year. It still lost a billion. Still lost a billion dollars for the year. And so how many staff? Fir- lost a few staff. There's yeah. seven percent. Seven percent of staff. So the first half of 2018 wasn't so great. Came home with a wet sale, but still lost a billion dollars over the 12 months. So according to Sarah Salinas at CNBC, Tesla's unpaid debt is still around a billion dollars. And that's mainly in convertible bonds, and they fall due on March 1, so in a month, at a conversion price of $359, nearly $360 a share. So share price is currently at around $310. It's rising, actually, over the course of this week, but they've got to get up to $360 a share, or by the end of this month, they'll be paying out a lot of cash, up to about a third of their liquid cash uh, reserves to meet that commitment. So 
And also, Elon can't help himself. He's <laughs> promised that by the end of the year, the Shanghai plant, which is dedicated to producing Model 3s yep. for Chinese consumption, mm. will be up and running, and they'll be producing 10,000 Model 3s a week by the end of this year, or very close to it. <laughs> very close to very it, which is 1,000 a week. So mm. that'll mean half wow. a million Model 3s a year, plus Tesla has the pickup truck to be unveiled mid-year yep. as a concept, the Model Y, yep. I don't know what's happening with the Roadster, there's the prime mover... Yes. The U.S. subsidies have fallen uh, significantly, and the allegation is there is that the Tesla Model 3 isn't moving as quickly as it once was. Yep. It's going to be a very interesting year. He'll do it. He'll do You're it. right. I think, I think he'll do it. I mean, a billion dollars to pay by, by March? But the numbers, be what's a billion tricky. dollars between? The numbers don't seem to matter. Like, Tesla seems to live in cloud cuckoo land. Like, yeah. they're going to be making no money. People still want three, pay $300 plus for a share. Like, everyone just, you know, well, it, that's, it, I mean, it does, exists outside of reality, that kind of thing. It's basically it? a religion. <laughs> Yeah, it's like um, and its followers are, you know, willing to put up with it. But I and guess. when all said and done, it's mm. still here. You know, yeah, the, the naysayers yeah. were saying by now, beginning of mm. 2019, it wouldn't even exist as a company. Yeah. It's mm. pumping out lots and lots of cars that people are buying. I and think, also, how many? Who else could get you to pay all that money for a car that doesn't exist yet? Like my neighbour yeah. ran up to me what feels yeah. like five years ago, and now said, "I've just put a deposit down on Model 3. Yeah. I said, "When did they tell you to get it?" He said, "I don't care." Yeah, right. I'm happy to wait. That's right. what I mean. And you can have yeah. my money in the meantime. Here's my money. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. the logic of it. It's mean, incredible. You know. I think once that Shanghai plant opens, um, I think, I think, I think, as 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 the disgruntled workforce in in the US has proven, um, I reckon the Chinese plant will be huge. It'll 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 start pumping out Model Threes and Model Ys. I think like physically it will be huge. As yeah. to whether over time, no, it I, proves I, to be a, a financial uh, powerhouse. We'll see. What I mean, I think there'll be no shortage of people who will work there, and you know, probably put up with the type of conditions and pressure and expectations that Elon has, which in the US people aren't willing to put up with. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Be mm-hmm. interesting to see. Do you but think the fact that he doesn't sleep is starting to drive him slightly bonkers. Like he obviously doesn't sleep. He does sleep mm-hmm. upside much? down in his upside wardrobe down, yeah. with his walls, uh, eyes open. Do, we don't get to see Michelle very often as well, either, do we? Michelle Grimes. Michelle Grimes. Yeah. Is no. that her first name? I thought she was just a Sting style one name. <laughs> just Grimes. Kind of just, just Grimes. Grimes. I just know her as Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. Right. You and her. Yeah. <laughs> like this, Michelle. We are like that. <laughs> we are. We go way back. Went to school together. Happily, yes. the secondhand market for Tesla is holding up well because the Fremont Police have bought a 2014 Model S and are using it as a black and white. So they're, oh. they're fully on board, and we'll have a picture of that for people watching on YouTube. If the car chase yeah. goes longer than 60 kilometres, they ask you to wait while they recharge. <laughs> to a supercharger. <laughs> That's right. Both Hang cars on. pull in. Are we right there? Yeah, Looney Tunes. <laughs> At a donut shop. Stop. <laughs> Bundy off. Start again. Off we go. Um, oh, the other thing is that Mr. Stephen, which oh. uh, Elon described as being like a bouncy castle, Mr. Stephen is actually a boat mm. that has an enormous net on the back of it uh, that is used to catch the nose cone from the Falcon 9 missile yeah. after a SpaceX launch because they're worth about six million bucks each. Mm-hmm. So if it just falls into the ocean, all kinds of things are degraded by exposure to salt water. So the idea is to try and catch it. So we've got this boat, Mr. Stephen, um, that had a big net. It's now four times bigger, and they're still having problems catching this um, this thing. Uh, sadly, because there's a steerable parachute that ejects from the, the nose cone thing, and the boat goes into a dynamic positioning system. So they're both trying to line up, and it just plops off the back mm. most of the time. So it hasn't been working. It's fun. It's on YouTube. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so there are three ways to go. You can do the joystick yes. uh, on the boat. You can do some presets, or you can have the skipper take the wheel. Yeah. And on balance, it seems the skipper taking the wheel might be the, the better bet, which is a bit like robots in the, in the plants. You know, putting cars together. Yeah. Too many robots. Maybe people can do a. But why, a Mr. Stephen? You should have called it Misty oh, Ricky Ponting. I know, the, the I know the answer. Well, why? The the the, Cer- the Ceratosaurus. Also, <laughs> Mr. Stephen. Mr. Stephen, right, is the name of the CEO of Ctran. No, the father of the CEO of Ctran. Ctran is the company that runs. The boat. The, the boat. Yeah. Oh, there so you it's go. called. It's it's named after a particular Stephen. His name is Stephen Magez. Wow. Yeah. Well wow. done. There you go. Okay. Mr. Seven. Well, Mr. that puts Steven. some sense so on that. So it's not me. <laughs> the, 
the uh, we've been um, religiously following the Bloomberg Model Three production tracker, and during the past week, they uh, have calculated that five thousand three hundred and sixty Model Threes were produced. That's up two hundred and thirty six on the week prior, and it's the second week in a row above five thousand. So that was this kind of tipping point. Elon was claiming they'd get six thousand, but five seems to be critical mass. So bring on the Giga Future. You know that's mm. that's uh, powering along. Uh, but we'll see how the, the year pans out. It's going to be a massive one. But uh, none of us have driven a Model 3. Have you driven a Model 3? No. No. no is that one? No. Yeah. Say, they look fantastic. I've seen, it I've looks s- fantastic. I've, seen one, I've sat in one at a motor show. Mm. The screen's fabulous. You know, your kids yeah. will love it. But yeah, I do look forward to driving it. Yeah. Because for me, it's like Model S, fantastic. Model X, less so. I've seen the Teardown, which yeah. are uh, a rival podcast uh, in the United States. Not a rival. I mean, mm. no one rivals us. No. But um, <laughs> They're they, smaller. They had some guys on from a company which does Teardowns. They do military equipment. They also do cars for car companies. And the guy that teared the uh, Model 3 down, they basically take it, they reverse engineer it, mm. and they do it he, for other car companies. He, so teared, they, he wow. teared it down. He teared, literally he, teared it down. And he prices up all the bolts, and he tells them, you know, Holden, this is how much, or General Motors, this is how much they actually spent building a Model 3. Wow. And this is what we think of the quality. Um, terrible built car fantastic like electronics he said he hasn't seen electronics like that other than on an f-35 like fighter. military grade military really? grade electronics but not well put together with bolts and things no but he said like from the teardowns he's seen they're getting better they'll, right. they'll nail it yeah um, and he said it's not as bad as people probably think but mm. you know little things which regular car companies get right all the time every day with their eyes shut a tesla's still learning how to do um they're yeah. a very new car company. That's yeah. why they borrow other people's bits. That's you know, other bits feels like feel like a Mercedes. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Which is a good way to do it. If you're going to borrow someone's bits. Yeah, <laughs> I borrow people's bits. Yeah. On that note, I think we've reached the finish line. Um, uh, thank you, Steve. Pleasure. And, and thank you, Richard. Oh, thank you. And look, thanks to our producer, Georgia. And a big farewell to longtime button pusher and editing whiz, Marsden, who's leaving us today. Oh. It'll be uh, the end of his tenure here. Good luck with the studies, mate. You know, we'll miss you. And I never really meant any of those things that I said about you, except the bit about being born on a highway because that's where most accidents happen. Uh, To have your say on the show, good or bad, search for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram and use the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. You can listen to and watch us on YouTube. And if you're an iTunes fan, please rate and review us. Um, Look, I have a 2019 New Year's request. If you're enjoying Tools in the Shed, please recommend it to just one person. Face-to-face or social media, word of mouth, do it today. It's good automotive karma. Um, Until next week, the police pull a young bloke over and the cop says, you were going at least 90 in an 80 zone. To which he says, no, sir, I was doing 75. Girlfriend in the passenger seat says, ah, sweetheart, you were doing 95. Girlfriend cops an evil glare. Cop says, I'm also going to give you a ticket for your broken tail light. To which the driver says, I don't know anything about a broken tail light. Girlfriend says, Oh, sweetheart, you've been on, you've been on about that broken tail light for weeks. She cops the death stare. So the cop says, I'm also going to give you a ticket for not wearing a seatbelt. To which the guy says, oh, I just took that off when you were walking up to the to the car. Girlfriend says, oh, You never wear your seatbelt. So the man just turns around to his girlfriend and says, can you please just shut up? To which the cop says, madam, does he always talk to you that way? She says, only when he's drunk. (laughs) Ah, that was terrible. (laughs) That's awful. (laughs) 